It was a time of betrayals, wars, and shifting alliances when the Three Kingdoms ruled the Korean Peninsula. And Yamato, the state that would become the Japanese state, didn't shy away from these games. What do you say we sprint through 300 years of Korean history in one video? I know, I know, they say it can't be done, it's too hard, you're putting your life on the line. Well so be it. I will do whatever it takes for you, the viewer. All I ask is that you leave a comment of support right now, in case I don't make it. Our journey begins in the 300s. The peninsula had three kingdoms, Kuguryo, Pekche, and Shila. There was also Kaya, which was a confederacy of little city-states tucked right between the two powerhouses of Pekche and Shila. Poor Kaya was the Hawkeye of the bunch, standing next to Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America. Fortunately, Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America were busy beating the crap out of each other. Now, let's take a second to remember the names of the three Korean kingdoms. Seriously, the rest of the video will be easy to follow if you just remember these three names. Koguryo was the strongest. It liked to call the other two its vassal states. Koguryo went around flexing its muscles, fighting bitter wars with Pekche, and even poking the bear called the Sui Dynasty by doing raids in Chinese territory. Koguryo did become friendly with Shila, though. It even orchestrated the ascension of a Shila king. Facing increasing Koguryo aggression, Pekche appealed to Yamato for military help. The Pekche king did something that apparently Pekche kings loved to do. To demonstrate trust and good faith, he sent his own heir to Japan as a hostage. Yamato sent an army to defend Pekche and attack Shila. In the 400s, Pekche and Shila formed an alliance against the bully Koguryo. Another huge war erupted between Koguryo and Pekche. And what do Pekche kings do in dire times? Oh my god, I'm in trouble. I know, let's ship a family member off to Japan. This time, the Pekche king sent his own mother to Japan as a hostage. Now, if he had sent his mother-in-law, I wouldn't have been worried. I had to. It's a necessary evil. Honey. But sending his own mother was a sign that the war was going disastrously for Pekche. Another sign that the war was going disastrously appeared in 475 when Koguryo attacked the Pekche capital and killed its king. This alarmed Yamato. They had the strongest relations with Pekche and the Kaya Confederacy, and Koguryo's rude behavior was threatening their influence in the peninsula. The geographical dice were unkind to the Japanese archipelago when it came to metal ore. Japan lacked metal, especially iron. Most of their iron came from Korea, so they had to maintain good relations with the peninsula. The Yamato Emperor Yuriaku backed a king to the empty Pekche throne. Remember the queen mother who was sent over as hostage earlier? The new king was either her son or her grandson. Yuriaku also wanted to attack Koguryo, but he died from sickness, and at that point the court was busy with other things. And now we're into the 500s. Pekche and Shila have grown stronger. Shila even started conquering territories in the Kaya Confederacy. Yamato tried to protect its ally by sending troops against Shila, but failed. After this loss, Japan appeared to have adopted a policy of non-intervention militarily. It lasted for decades. Of course, there were small military expeditions here and there, and they kept sending supplies to allies, but there were no major excursions. It seemed that their focus shifted towards taking care of things at home and away from losing wars in foreign lands. By mid-century, things weren't going so well for Pekche, as usual. When they looked north, they saw relentless Koguryo attacks. When they looked east, they saw an aggressive Shila pushing further into Kaya territory. Now, Pekche was still allied with Shila, remember, but you can't trust those shifty Shila bastards. They feared an imminent Koguryo-Shila alliance. And so they sought help from Yamato and sweetened the deal by introducing Buddhism and writing to Japan. The introduction of Buddhism was a whole big thing. Check out this video. Curiously, Pekche did not send over a hostage this time. Pekche's paranoia was proven right. Shila attacked in 553, shattering the alliance, and Yamato sent troops to reinforce Pekche's borders. In 562, Shila absorbed the entire Kaya Confederacy leaving Pekche as Yamato's closest friend in the peninsula. Meanwhile, up north, remember how Koguryo was poking Sui the bear? Well, they poked too hard, and the bear poked back. With claws. In the next video, hey, say thank you to our new patron, Sheldon Cooper. I mean, Sheldon Hall.
Hello! If you like this video, please click the like button, it really helps. If you didn't like the video, please click the subscribe button so you don't miss more videos. And did you know that this video is part of a playlist? Check it out. I'll see you over there.